I'm JD and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be looking at an old pocket watch from my friend Alan. So I think I asked him a question, who owned this watch? So we're also using the new um, camera that I talked about in a video, a previous video. What is it? A 960E? So a 960E? N960E, I think. And I don't have the light on for the camera right now. And this is what the bag looks like with the new watch in there. So Anyway, before I continue, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, click the little bell so you can get notifications when I have a new video. And you can email me at uh, jdwatchservice at gmail.com if you want some watch work done. So my bench is almost empty. It's getting very, very close. I've got one uh, watch running for Luke. It ran all night. It's continuing to run. This is a good sign, Luke. I'm telling you, it's a good sign in case you're watching. So the first thing I'm going to do is touch the camera and turn on one of the lights. There we go, look at that. The light is on and let's open this puppy dog up and see what we got. Well that's nice. R. R for ready to clean. So this clip, let me see if this, see if I can zoom in on this thing. See if my zoom works. Of course it won't work today. Oh there we go. What's this? True plate warranted? Warranted? Yeah, true plate warranted. Not sure what that means, but anyway. It's probably go or silver filled. There's a little bit of green stuff in the, in the center there. And there's the R, as you can see. R. It's a pirate clip. R. I need to cut my thumbnail here. I do use that, like I said, guitar fingernails thumbnail used for opening up watch lids. So it's that's quite nice. Not sure what the R is for. This looks like it is silver of some sort. So there's the watch. I'm going to turn off the light now because I want to get less reflection. See if this works here. Up, up, down, nothing there. So I'm just getting reflection from the ceiling lights. So this is a, an American Waltham watch. Very old. Uh, Roman numerals on it. Um, I don't think it's in good working condition. But let me open this thing up the back and see what this says in here. It seems like the threads are a little bit crossed, so I just have to put a little bit of outward pressure on this, like this. Pull it out a bit as I open this, just so the threads don't get any uh, tension on them. And this says coin, so that's coin silver. American Watch Company, CO, coin silver. So that's coin silver. To look up what coin silver has been uh, cleaned maybe a couple times once maybe twice not sure there's some cleaning marks over on this side here uh, basically the watchmaker put his initials in there so so that's that um, coin silver there's the movement so there's the watch movement and we've got ourselves a it says bond bond street it's bond street american Waltham Watch Company, AWWC, and then it says Waltham, Massachusetts, Mass. Uh, safety pinion, this thing is old. I think this is pretty old. So the number here is two six two six seven. What is that? Six two six seven eight seven eight six seven. Six two six seven eight six seven. So you can look that up, or maybe I'll look it up, and let's see what. Uh, what the vintage of this watch is. All right, I looked this up and I managed to get a window view in my OBS software. So there you go, window view, OBS software, window view. I like my new camera better. Anyway, so <clears throat> American Waltham, there's a the movement serial number that I uh, mentioned. Bond Street is correct. That's what the uh, movement says. Model 1884, that's the model number. So the Production date 1894, May 1894 to August 1894. So total production or run quantity there was 300, but the, for that lot or batch, the total production was 187,000 of these babies. So it's a size 14S, which is a strange size. It's only seven jewels, which I could see already. Open face, pennant, three quarter plate, which is a pain in the butt, a briguet. Liguet hairspring, uh, which seems to be working. Railroad, nope. 
Um, so that's pretty much what this is. So it's an old pocket watch. It's from the 1800s, late 1800s. So I'm going to get to work on this watch. Um, and first I'm going to do is test its amplitude before I take it apart and see if I can improve that. All right, I'm going to check the amplitude in two different ways. The first one is just to, to uh, check it on my watch escapement analyzer and timer and see what it says. Um, and I'll be quiet. I'll flip over to that screen in a second and then we'll look at that. And then I'm going to actually take a video of it and see how many degrees it swings because I think the amplitude is low, really low. All right, as you can see, I've got a, um, looks like I've got a rate of minus 167 seconds per day. Amplitude is 145. Um, I kind of don't believe that. I'm not sure how it's calculating the amplitude here, but I don't believe it. Anyway, uh, the beat error is 1.93. So I'm going to just videotape this, this swing of the balance now and see what that looks like. All right, a little windowed here, but my e-timer rate again is my um, rate is minus 167 seconds per day, and the amplitude's 145. That's through my e-timer software. All right, now if I look at this on my iPhone in slow motion, this is what I'm looking at. So if you look at one of these arms traveling from here to here, it's probably about 180 degrees almost 180 degrees I'd say so it's just swinging 180 degrees it said the amplitude was 145 degrees I don't believe that amplitude should be half of the uh, overall swing of one of those arms um, so the amplitude would be like 90 degrees so it's crap anyway I can measure it the third way too so I also ran this watch through my Swiss Connect software that says the amplitude should be um, 269 degrees, which is absolutely wrong. So we're going to go with the slow motion video on this one. All right, let's start disassembling this old pocket watch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I got to let the power down on it. So it's ticking away like nobody's business, but only a uh, 180 degree swing on that. So in a poopy, poopy amplitude. So actually, I'm not sure how to let the power down on this thing. It looks like there's no power release on it unless it's that hole there so I'm gonna have to figure this one out or just disassemble it and take the balance off while it's running so power release hole I'm not sure let me check this out well I think I'm gonna have to take it apart first before I release the power so I'm gonna get the hands off of it so we'll see if I can see if I can turn this so it's a uh, it says 24 on the top, so 2400 hours and also a uh, Roman numerals, which is it might have been used in the, um, in, the, in the railroad before there were railroad grade watches. So we shall see. So I'll start by taking the cover off this watch here. This is a crystal, and it looks like a grass, a glass crystal, a grass crystal. So I'm going to. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to shine this thing up a bit. Get rid of all those scratches. And let me see. Now we're going to remove the hands. Very tricky, actually. I don't want to remove this second hand while this thing is running. So I'm going to get my wider hand removers. And I watched uh, one of my esteemed colleagues in watch repairs, Mark and I saw Mark use these hand removers but he just used the edge of them like that he didn't go dead center like this like that he just used the edge like this and then prime them up like that that works really well Mark thanks a lot I'm impressed I don't want to move this second hand until the watch is actually stopped but I'll remove these hands just in case just to prevent any chance of, of maiming or marring the hands and I usually throw them into uh, into the back of the uh, where the crystal is so like that 
And uh, I was accused of just gathering parts up in the corner the other day in a watch club video where the one of the gentlemen said that uh, yeah JD just puts all his parts in a pile. I'm like yeah that's kind of not the way it works, but it's nice to be loved anyway, right? So I've got one screw here to remove in the back. And I think I'm just going to rest this down here like that. Because when I remove this screw, this whole thing might fall out. All right, it's falling out and ticking away. So let me just like lift this up because I don't want second hand to get squashed. You have a look at this thing here. And see where the, oh yeah, see right here, this little thing here. I'm going to go close again, eh? Close up. Look at, look at the close up. See if I can do a close up with this new camera. You have to kind of center it. There you go. So this little notch here, I believe if I press this notch in right there, that the mainspring will let go. So what I want to do is on one side, I want to make sure I've got a, um, a winder in there so the mainspring doesn't go crazy on me. So I'll just pick pick one of my winders, make sure I got the right one. Too small, too small. It's always like Goldilocks when you do this stuff. Too big, too small. That's too big. This should be just right. Look at that. Eh? So and that's for setting the time when you push it in and then you wind it. So what I do is hold this on one side like that. See if I can get a visual on this. And I think all I need to do is push this over, and that'll release the mainspring. So there we go. Okay, so I just had to, you just have to notch it over, and then, and then ride this bench key down, so the mainspring just doesn't snap. So that's why this these old watches don't have a, a way to do this with the click spring, because it's a fundamentally a full plate watch, almost a full plate, three quarter plate watch. So you just have to hold this down and let this mainspring go. So it's still unwinding a bit, and then eventually the, uh, there we go. Eventually the balance will come to a halt, like that. So the balance is no longer running. And now I can very carefully remove the second hand. So let me grab my little plastic sheet again and see if I can get underneath the second hand. And another thing is, don't try to get the second sand out with a screwdriver on one side. That's not a good practice because you should be lifting the second sand up from the center um, very carefully and right up like that. That way you don't bend the pivot that's on the bottom because there's a pivot in the center here and you don't want to bend that. So I'll take that second sand. I'm going to put that where the other one was before and put my little plastic sheet back. I've got these fancy Bergeron sheets too that I bought, but they're they're a bit thick. I'll show you what they look like. These ones here. Let's put it the right way. So 6938. Um, they're okay, I guess, but uh, I find that they're a little bit thick for removing the hands. Sometimes uh, you need more distance underneath the hands to do that. So so it doesn't always work. So now I've got this out. I want to remove the balance first. And I can just let this sit here on, on this uh, uh, watch. I could get my, this is a nice soft pad here. I'm not too worried about it, but uh, I don't want to maim anything. So I want to take the balance out and then put it on the, uh, one of the balance tacks. So I just remove that screw here and it doesn't go too deep. And I'm going to put this on this balance tack here. So I've got a little, this is a bounce tack that I invented and made. So it's kind of neat because it allows, if you put it on the lower one, it actually lets the bounce rest on these pads. If it goes too deep down, I'll just dangle it from this one. Or I've got a third solution with another bounce tack that I made where I can adjust how deep it goes. So I'll try this first um, and see if this works. I got some pressure on the top here while I'm pulling this up a bit and that is so this thing just didn't pop up and ruin the uh, hairspring 
So I just want to dip it sideways while I try to convince it to come out. And then just rest this right here. And you see the arms should rest in there. And that's perfect. So there you go. So there's no tension on the hairspring right now. If you look at that hairspring a little sideways like that, you can see it just sitting there. So there's absolutely zero tension on the hairspring, is, which is what I want. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. Always move your parts out, out of the way. And here's what I got remaining. So I want to remove the face next, which is a simple matter of uh, removing these retaining screws here that are part of the... Uh, they hold in the dial feet. So if I just unscrew these retaining screws, I'm going to be very careful. I don't want to strip, strip any screws. So I've got one here. You shouldn't have to take them all the way out, but you do have to get them out of the way so the dial feet are kind of out of the way, the way they snug the dial feet in. And you don't want them to be stripped as well, and I usually take them out and then I put them back in again. So, let me just get, see if I can get a grip on the, uh, whatever groove there is remaining in this screw. i got to get in a little closer here for this, because it looks like there's groove issues. get a different screwdriver and see if it works any better. I'm putting a lot of downward pressure on this screw because I don't want to strip it. So I'm just trying to grab the edge of the screw here. These old watches have personality, I'm telling you. Let me take a look at my screwdriver here. Yeah, that's pretty good. When I'm done with this, I mean... I may replace this screw because it's being a real pain in the butt to take out. It's a retaining screw for this here, so I'm going to turn on a little bit of light here. A little more light. There we go. It's well lit now. So that's put, pr putting pressure on here, and this screw's got almost no no grip left on it here which is a bit of a pain because i'm having fun trying to get this thing to come out i don't want to strip it start off the whole repair work with having to do deal with a screw issue but since it's a watch that's over 100 years old um, i don't blame it for being such a pain in the butt See if I can groove that screw a bit. <sighs> figures, figures one of the screws would be screwed up. Eh? There's absolutely no groove on this screw. You can look at that up close. I'm going to give you a close up of that screw, hopefully. Now you see that screw there? That screw right here, and it's almost grooveless. There. You can almost see no groove on that screw at all. So I'm going to have to figure out how to take that out. Um, I've got stuff that does help, but I'm not sure if this will help in this situation here. Because I think that I got the, these two out, which is nice. But this third one is a pain in the butt. What's going on here? Oh, look at that. It just came out. 
So if the dial foot was in here, but the screw is just sort of sitting there. And if I look in the hole, the screw is not even contacting. If I look in that hole there, and I can see that that screw is not even going through. So you can't see a screw in that hole there, right? So it's a left, right, up and down. Get my, there's no screw tapping through. So that screw is hopeless. Um, the dial feet are in pretty good condition here, as you can see. Hope you're enjoying my new camera as it zooms in and fixes stuff. There's some surface cracks here. Uh, let me just get rid of some of the stuff on the top here. Get this out of the way, the hour wheel. And I, if I can remove this wheel here, I usually do, but it's not essential, absolutely essential. Um, I don't need to dig in to get it, so yeah, it's on top. And it looks like there's a spring on top of the wheel here, so I don't think this is removable. It's an interesting little spring here, too. Yeah, anyway, so that's the dial. I'll leave that where it is. And it was the dial foot screw issue, so every watch I work on has got an issue of some sort, especially when they're over 100 years old. So, so and pff, I don't want to remove the cannon pinion until I've removed this wheel, too, because you can bend a tooth on the cannon pinion. I'm a little concerned about the, uh, the spring on this side here holding this in place and the pivots, so we'll leave that where it is. Um, if I can just grab the cannon pinion and then pull up, I might have a solution, right? So, just adjust this camera here a little closer for the work. Sometimes I can just do that. There we go. Cannon pinion came out. I'll put that over with the, the lens as well. So we got ourselves a cannon pinion. I'm practicing my focusing right now. I don't think it'll focus on a part this small that close unless it's dead center. No. It's focus practice. So the cannon pinion's out. Now I need to get a movement holder. So I'll be right back with my number 50 something, 58 movement holder. All right. For you, it's been one millisecond. For me, it's been two and a half hours. So, just put this movement back in play here. So what I'm going to do here is just tighten these screws up so I don't lose them. And I've got the useless screw as well. i got to stop slipping here. I'm too, my hand is actually above the camera almost. I'm so close right now. This is a screw that makes no sense here at all. I'm not sure why it's even in there. And I'll have to deal with that. So oh, this one here looks fine, but I've got to get in a little closer because I'm not doing this properly. Lucky it's not a Rolex. Oops, see, screw that back in and we're good. And there we go. I'll leave the minute wheel where it is for now. We'll have to take all this stuff off anyway. So, or maybe, maybe. The only reason I'm saying maybe is because sometimes I leave that on because it's dangerous sometimes to remove some of this stuff. So I want to remove this screw here. I just heard it click. Move that and put that over there again. And now I've got two screws here to take off. It's funny, there's only two screws on this plate. Normally plates have three screws, but from this is from the 1890s, I guess they didn't discover the third plate until later on. So, so I'm going to take these screws off here and try to get this plate off. I think it should just come straight up. Shouldn't be an issue. I need to back the camera up just a bit here. Because it's kind of getting in my way right now. And I was told by somebody that... I just randomly put parts in places, which is kind of funny, because I don't. I'm actually thinking, I, I group stuff up, and actually when I used to do the uh, cleaning by hand, um, I would just go right to the parts, clean them, put them right back to where they were. But then I 
discovered my automatic cleaning machine. You can see those these two screws are exactly the same size, so I don't have an issue here. They would be threaded the same way as well. Um, so press the button here. I just want to get access to the edge here, so I can just lift it up a bit. Um, anyway, yeah, with the cleaning machine, I don't want to do that. So just lift that straight up, and there's the gears. And there's the plate, and this is only a seven joule movement, right? So there's nothing super complex about this watch. Uh, but I'll just give you a close-up just for the heck of it, because I could do that now. See, there's the movement. It's a beautiful old movement. 1894, I think, is what I said. The first year these things were in production. So it's just refocusing. It snaps to the refocus really fast. I think this is as, that was as close as I can get right about here, which is about two inches away, which gives you a really nice close-ups. So I can refer back to this if I need to, but there it is. So I can start plucking parts off the top here. And in the right order, this thing just steps right down from the center wheel down. And the uh, mainspring will just come right out. Be very careful when you take this stuff off. And the pallet fork I want to take off because I'm throwing all this stuff into, into the washing machine, the washer and dryer. Here we go, look at that. Turn the light up on that a little. I think I can, it compensates for having too much light as well, right? By turning it down. So if I turn the light off, you get that picture. You get it one click, it's like that. It's probably probably good right there. You guys can let me know um, after this video is done. I'm gonna get deep and dirty here now because I'm, I'm gonna probably hit my head on the tighten this up a little. Take out the mainspring barrel. Come straight up. That's oh, one of these guys, eh? Is it? One of these guys. And I usually look at both sides here to see if there's a difference. In the... No, there isn't. Usually, sometimes there's a sweep in the gears, so it's beveled slightly. This time, there's no beveling in the gears. Yeah, and there's a spring on the inside here. You could probably remove that spring as well. So. I think I will take a picture of this even though even though I probably don't have to I'm going to do it anyway because I want to be able to put that back perfectly perfectly there it's a little bit of complexity involved here so not a lot just a little this here just sits down like that and then there's a spring on the other side let me look at that the other way you can see the way this winding mechanism goes in. And then if you flip it over, you can see how that's, there's a, th I've, I've done these watches before actually, because there's a, a little peg here that you gotta put in place, right? You gotta have that little peg in the right place in order to put this back in, in place. And if you don't, it's gonna screw up. So, so what I'll do is, Trying to figure out whether I take the back off first or the front off. Now let's get rid of the pallet fork first, just to make sure it's out of the way. So I'm just going to reach in here and I take this at a bit of an angle here. See if this helps any. Like that. There we go. So now my hands are in the way. The camera's got a really good close up there. Yeah. I said you wait till you hear the little tick. I usually like doing one screw at a time instead of loosening them both and then taking them both off. It's much easier to control it this way. And the pallet fork doesn't even have a, let me see, I want to get a toothpick out here or a piece of pegwood. Toothpick will do. But I just want to hold this down so as I take the screw out it doesn't rock the uh, bridge for the pallet fork which can slightly disrupt the uh, the pivot on the pallet fork which might cause problems doubt it but it might you never know so i just have to wedge this 
screw, a screwdriver in like that, nice and easy. And then on the other side too, this is not tightened, but I can manage it like this and pull that straight up. And uh, thingy jobby doohickey in here. There we go. Straight up, that's the bridge. And then the pallet fork hopefully just lifts straight up. And it does. Perfect. It's all cleaned up. There's the banking pins there. You don't need adjusting usually. And I think I may want to flip this over. I don't want to lose this in the wash machine, so I think I will take the spring out. But the spring needs to be grouped with the uh, with the screw because the screw is probably specific to this spring, the depth of it, because it looks pretty shallow. So just put that aside. I'll show you what my parts look like after. And put that next to it, and then I saw how this went in. I took a picture of it, so that'll all get washed, washed the same way. I might be able to lift this straight up here. I did, so that's good. Take that out. Um, and then this should come straight up as well. that uh, grab that and I don't have I have another screw here with another spring that I can take out yeah it's funny these screws are not in tight at all when I compare them to the uh, take the whole nonsense out all at the same time so I've almost got them stripped down I don't think I'll do the assembly, but I'll do the cleaning. But uh, the assembly is another thing. I'm going to take a picture of the top here. Just to again make sure that I've got a photo of how this thing goes together. And This spring here is just a piece of wire, so I'm leaving this where it is. It's just shoved in here. And all that does is put this back in place like that. So I have a suspicion when I take this out, tighten that up a bit. It looks like someone's done work on this before. I'm just hoping it's... Yeah, there we go. Good. Oh, bang, boom, crash. i got to get the exact right angle here. There. Is that the right angle? I want to be close, but I don't want to hit my head on the damn thing, so... <clears throat> I like watching uh, just a little bit off. Just tilt it like that. There. I like watching Bun Special, because he's... Turns out he's two years, or three years younger than me, but he swears like he's ten years older. He doesn't swear, he just sort of goes, Bar, geez, I, I hate this stuff. Uh, I like this. Pretty funny to watch. Um, he, it's a love-hate relationship between him and watches. I've come to realize. I'm taking a picture of this too, just the way these gears are sitting in here, so I don't screw this up. And there may be beveling on those gears as well. So just get a close-up of this here, and then we should be good. I just stopped and started my recording so I wouldn't uh, that just punches out like that move that over here tell you the winding mechanisms on these are interesting to say the least so I look at this and I want to see if this is beveled at all uh, no it don't, doesn't look like it is it looks like it's just a straight straight up gear good these are different. I think these are different size gears. Hopefully not. I'll know when I try to put it back together again and it doesn't fit. Grab this one here. I think this guy has got to go on the other side in order to pick this gear out. There we go. I'm leaving that spring in place, so I'm not taking that out. 
because it's probably tensioned just right. Now this should lift straight up. Oh, friggin' jeez. It's not. I love the refocusing. It's a thing of beauty. I think the spring is keeping this down. What do you think? I think if I move that spring down more, my thumb, it should come right up. Geez, that's pretty, pretty stuck in there. Let's move it around just a bit here. Oh yeah, that's. That's uh, jammed in there. So I don't think it's supposed to be jammed in like that. I'm trying to find a, a, a surface I can get under here. I don't want to stress it though. I just want to lift it up. There we go. That's the minute wheel. And I'll put that over here and I'll put and I'll grab the so there we go. That's I'm not taking that spring out there. I'm a little worried about replacing that in, in exactly the same place, and I'm not taking. Uh, that's the only one I think. Yeah, that was the only spring I'm not removing. So that's the bottom plate. Um, <laughs> there's the plate number from the manufacturer from a billion years ago down there. It's a nice plate, uh, and that will go into the wash machine, as they say. And what else do I got? My Myers number 58 movement holder. I've got some parts here that I want to uh, take out. All right, so I want to remove some of these parts, like the uh, hour wheel and the cannon pinion. And this is a case screw, which I can also wash. I can just put that over by the other screws and I'll leave the hands where they are. I don't need to wash that. I'll ultrasonically clean this maybe. I think I might just do this one by hand instead of ultrasonically cleaning it. It looks pretty good. It's uh, you don't want it to rust too, but it's silver so it should be fine. It might tarnish a bit. So there's there are the parts. So just to let you know. So and I'll I'll be stacking them into the machine now. So I gotta take the I do have to remove the spring I have to remove the mainspring here. So this is a T mainspring because you can see the little hole there. So I'm going to do another close-up because I love close-ups. So we have there you go. See that little tiny that little tiny mark right there. Right there, that's the T part. Sorry, I, I missed it. There it is. The T part for the mainspring. That's the T mainspring. I put my screwdriver under here and just wedge it up, and that'll that'll just move this whole cap upward like that right so just do that and then you can just ride your screwdriver along the edge and then you can take the cap straight up and see if I can do this under camera here making maximum use of my camera and just move that around and have a look have a look at the other end of that see all the old oil in there that is dirty as hell so that's the old oil and put that over by the plate and there's the arbor so I just have to pop that out and pop the arbor out. If you're lucky, you just put your screwdriver in here and then the arbor comes. It just takes it away from the hook and falls out. So that's the arbor. It's the mainspring arbor there. I'll put this over here as well. And now I want to take the mainspring out. There's a ton of oil on this mainspring. I'm impressed though how much oil there is on this ancient mainspring. I guess it didn't, didn't never evaporated or something. So I should be able to just pu push, pull this up a bit, and get a get my. Uh, I want to get my fingernails on here somehow. But I don't want to stress this uh, spring too much when I'm doing this. So I want to walk it out. So here's if I can get my thumbnail under one side here like that, then I can I can work it out. And there we go. Now I get my thumbnail like that and just walk it out like this. But I'm holding, also holding one side down as I walk it out. That way it just doesn't fly out of my face. That's how you walk out a mainspring like that. So 
There's no way, other way of doing this. You can't use a mainspring winder to walk it out. I will use a mainspring wire to put it back in so it doesn't pyramid on me. So, And if I look at that flat on, it looks pretty good. So it's not, it's not sticking out, sticking out like that, which is you're trying to avoid, right? So that's a T end on the mainspring and it looks pretty good. So we'll wash that as well. And there's the barrel, here's the old barrel, and we'll wash that too. So now I'll get the containers out and I'll containerize all this and I'll show you how I'm doing that. It's so interesting. I know you're just dying to tell your friends to stand around the TV and watch this JD guy do watch, watch crap. So here's my, I think I showed this to you a little while ago, but here's the, here's the containers for the wash machine. I've got two sets of this, these that came with the Pearl wash machine. So this is the second set, I think. Um, and I bought a whole whack of little tiny containers to hold screws and stuff so I wouldn't uh, lose anything. So I just have to pull that up. That's first level, second level, and then the third level. And the third level, I'll, I'll put the mainspring in and other things. So let's see what I do here. So I take the plate. I can put the two plates in here. And there should be no problem throwing both plates in here. This is a one dirty, uh, I think I'll put the barrel in here as well. I can do a separate thing for the barrel though. I don't need to. I got plenty of space. Plenty of space. I could even put the barrel in the top here. Separate little containers for the barrel. Will that fit? I'm looking at this to see. It's got to fit nicely because if it doesn't fit nicely then I don't want it in there. It's got to fit, fit flat. So this is the top one here, so I can put a bunch of stuff in the top one. I'm not worried about rattling around. So I don't, I'm not too concerned about some of the gears hitting each other. Um, I want to group screws though. So if I have this plate here, and I throw in this top part here that I had from before, I also want to group the screws. Now these screws are not small enough to get through the mesh there, so we're good. I can throw those in. Um, I might want to put some of these in my baskets, and I might not want to do that, I'm not sure. So, so I put the mainspring in there on the bottom one. And I, can, I think I, that's all I want on the bottom one. Uh, I could throw, now there's no need to, to throw the case, any case stuff in here. That's just going to bang stuff around, so. So that's the bottom one. So the next one would be this one. And in this one I could throw, I'm not sure if I put gears in here or not. Because I could, I could throw some gears into these smaller containers. Let me, let me open one of these containers. See what I put in here. So this is from, yeah, these are the gears from the other piece that I had. Because there should be two of those gears, right? There's one there, but there should be another one of those gears. Does anybody remember where that went? <laughs> yeah, I know there's two of these gears. I think I remember putting them on top of each other. There's that gear, there's this gear, and I believe there are two more. Or one more. Did I throw it in here? Don't, didn't think so. No, nope, it's not in there. It's not in there. It's not in there. It's not in there. And did I put it in here? I don't think so. I'm hunting here for some... I'm missing a small gear. I don't want to lose it. I'm absolutely sure I put two gears here. I'm going to have to look back at my film. See what I did. And see where that other gear went. I don't know. I'm confused. Anyway, so what I'll do is I'll throw some of this stuff into, into here. Keep that together. Um, I can actually put some of these gears in. Do I want to put that in there? No. That's too... Uh, I can put the bridge. And there was a screw in this one here too, I think. 
What did I put in there? Let me look at that closely. What is that? Yeah, that's the screw for it. So I'll put that in there too. I'm gonna make sure when I take this all out that I take the screws out too. Because this screw is for the spring here. So I want to get another one of these little containers. <clears throat> it's like watching golf. I don't think I've completely figured this out yet. I need to clean many more watches to get it all down pat, right? Yeah, I'm wondering whether there's something like this. I don't like the fact that I can't find the other gear here. This one here. Because I know there was two. So, I know they're not in my hands. And I'll check, I'll check all over. But, so I've got another container here. So I want to put this here. This little screw here. And this here. And I can throw these gears in there, I think. Oh, there's the two gears. Oh my god, you idiot. So gear one, gear two, and then put this gear in. These are not going to cause any problems with each other. And this part here, I can throw the cannon pinion in here as well, because it's a little bit tougher. And then I've got the two gears here for the uh, for this. So, or two screws for this, so I don't think i got a problem throwing these in the same... This is a little spring in here, though. It makes it a little nervous. But I still need room for my... Uh, I still need room for some of the gears here. Because I can throw this gear in here without a problem. It's, it's pretty tough. I don't think that'll bang out anywhere. Uh, and this gear here, I don't want... I want this one to have its own little home. I'm going to put that on top here. I'm going to put this other one on top here and then this guy here I think I will put this bridge here and I'll throw I think this comes apart I don't if I recall you, you basically have a post there and then you stick the post out so I think I will throw the post and everything right inside with this one here and then I've got the two screws that I'm going to throw in here as well. Because they're not going to be able to get through that mesh, I hope. Pretty sure. I don't know, it's always a little tricky. You don't want the uh, screws to go missing. But I don't think those mesh holes are big enough to cause a problem. Uh, and then I've got these screws here. Because I can just toss those in anywhere. Let me think. I'm almost down to nothing here. I need to put the escapement somewhere, so I think I'll take one of these jars out again. This is me trying to think while I'm doing this. Sorry about the uh, boringness of this video. So I'm going to put the escapement here in its own little container. So nothing can hit it. It's all safe in its own container. This has got nothing in it so far. And I think I can just fill it up with the other rest of the parts. Let me grab this here and open this up. Ah, come on. They're great little containers, but they're tough to open. I need a bigger screwdriver to just wedge it in there and then twist it like that. There we go. New technique for opening containers. <clears throat> All right, so i got a bunch of screws I can put in there now. Parts I don't concern with rattling together. So I've separated the parts in a way that I'm pretty satisfied. The pallet fork I'm doing on my own. So I'm going to move that over to where the balance is. Because so I'm going to hand clean the pallet fork. I don't trust putting the pallet fork into any type of liquid. Where it could uh, end up dissolving or something. So, so I'll put that in here. Like that. And then this one here can go into here like this and then this one can go into here like this got it all figured out man it's all figured out
Turn that around. There we go. So this was the middle one, I believe. So that goes down in the middle, like so. Like that. And then this one goes on top. Yeah, it's pretty risky with those little screws. I'm just worried about those little screws in there. But I'm going to take my chance this time, I guess. Because this goes on top of this. And it gets squeezed down. So, so this goes on like this. And then this gets squeezed down on top like that. So nothing should happen. These should stay in place. Should be should not be an issue with that. And then all I have left is the... Uh, I've got the crystal to clean. And I've got the watch case and the hands. So, But I don't want to put the hands through the cleaner. Because they're too delicate to clean. So... So there we go. So that's the watch stripped down and cased um, and ready to go. So uh, that's my video for today. It's pretty long and maybe not that exciting, but uh, this is a disassembly. So I'll probably make another this video about you know showing the reassembly. But I want to split them up this time because it is getting late. No, it's 3.03. I might be able to do the assembly later. So. That's it for this video. Um, I'll process this video while I'm cleaning the watch.